Hello, hello, hello. Peace and blessings to everybody out here on this beautiful day. Hope everybody's doing well. We, we come out here on behalf of a uh, church called Gathering of Christ Church. And uh, we're comprised mostly of young brothers and young sisters. We do have our elders as well. But uh, we come out here with a, with a different type of message. We do use uh, the King James Bible, the Holy Bible. We come out and preach Christ, but we're not like your average Christian. We actually denounce the vast majority of Christi Christianity and its doctrine. Like we're so accustomed to uh, cr uh, Christmas, right? Easter, right? Uh, what is it? Uh, 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 baby baptism. Right? All these different doctrines that are pushed and taught by the by the Roman Catholics and all its underlings, the Baptists, the Jehovah's Witnesses, all of these sects and denominations of Christianity, we are actually opposed to. And, I, and we're gonna we're gonna tell you exactly why we're opposed to it because we follow the Bible. A lot of you might be like, well, what are you what are you talking about? Christianity Bible, right? Don't you know that Easter is not found in the Bible? Right? Don't you know that uh, Jehovah's Witness is not found in the Bible? Don't you know that Christmas is not find, found in the Bible? Don't you know that Sunday worship is not found in the Bible? Don't you know Caucasian Jesus is not found in the Bible? So you see why we said initially that we don't correlate or we don't belong with the stereotypical Christian way and the Christian doctrine. Because if you're, you're going to come to find out if you read the Bible, and you follow the Bible as it is written, you are not a Christian yourself. You can't be. You can't be. Because if you read the Bible, you'll start keeping the commandments. One of the commandments is remember the Sabbath. Don't you know the Sabbath is about to come upon us today? As soon as the sun sets, it is a Sabbath day, a day of rest, a day we're not supposed to be working, shopping, doing our own will. You see that? But if you're a Christian, what are you doing? You're celebrating what? You're honoring what? Sunday. The day after Saturday. So after you get done getting yours in in the club, shopping on a Saturday, the, the Lord's Sabbath day, what do you do? The next day, Sunday, a day that was historically worshipped, uh, that was historically used to worship the sun god, you go and celebrate on. Completely opposite of what God intended, what God designed and implemented when he created the seventh day, when he hallowed the seventh day. You see that? So it's either... Christianity got it messed up or the Bible got it messed up. And let me tell you son, you're gonna come to find out that Christianity has it all the way messed up. And we and, and we, we encourage anybody to prove us wrong. Please, because if we're wrong, we need to know it. We are in the last days. We are not trying to be wrong. We are not trying to be wrong. Trust us. As much wickedness, as much debauchery, as much as much downfall as that's coming to this society and this world, we do not want to be caught up in it. So if you know something that we're saying is wrong, please come and correct us, please. We got the Bibles here. We'll, we'll give you the microphone. Please show us what we're doing is contrary to the Word of God. But you're going to come to find out that Christianity is contrary to the Word of God. Let's get, um, let's get the commandments. Let's go to Exodus 20. You're a Christian, you probably have these Ten Commandments posted up in your house, and we and we applaud that. But if you got them posted up, please know them. Please know them, and please follow them. Please follow them. So let's get into it. Read, uh, we're in Exodus chapter 20. Read. Exodus chapter 20, verse 1. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Verse 3, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Any what? Any graven image. Now hold up. Now we're talking about comparing and contrasting Christianity with what the Bible says, right? So let me ask you a question, you Roman Catholics and you, Christian, and you Christians. What is it that you have around your neck right now? you probably have around your neck if you're a so-called Christian. Huh? That's, that's a cross, right? 
whether it be wooden, made out of gold, nowadays made out of gold with diamonds in it, right? Silver maybe, sterling, whatever it is, you got a cross around your neck. Most Christians, not all, most Christians, let me make that clear, not all, but most Christians. Now read that part again, this is in the commandments, read. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above. The heaven above or that is in the earth beneath. Earth beneath, right? Or that is in the water under the earth. No graven image of a rock, of a cross, of a man, of anything. Anything that you can see, anything that's in the heavens above and the earth beneath, you are not to make a graven image of it. So why is it that we have so-called followers of Christ walking around with pendants, with crosses, with graven images. You hear that? Why is that? Like we said in the beginning, we're going to keep saying it, man. If you end up following this Bible, you're going to end up going against what your pastor and, and, and your preacher and your Christian foundation has taught you. Real talk. For real. That's what's going to end up happening. But you know what? That's the division that Christ wants. In these last days, he wants his true followers to stand up. He wants those that are truly with him. Okay? Right? Those that are truly with him. Those that are willing to obey him over man. That's who he's looking for. Because if you follow a man and you obey man, man will lead you and, and trip you up in the ditch. Easy. You understand that? Easy. So he needs somebody that's going to follow him word for word. Thus saith the Lord, just like he said, because this word has life. He's the friend. He said this word is life. You understand that? So we need to stop thinking and really start to adjust and compare ourselves to this word. Right? Read on. We're going to continue with the commandments. Read. Exodus chapter 20, verse 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Now, according to this Bible, Muslims got it all off. Bow, bow into the Kaaba stone. All off. According to this word. Read. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandment. Do what? And keep my commandment. Get a glimpse of this area right now. Just turn yourself 360. See everybody around here? Majority are. What's that, brother? You know what, brother? This is the world we're in right now. Go ahead, bro. I'm listening. It's a blessing that you acknowledge that. We all, hey listen brother, no, we're, not, we're not up here saying we're perfect brother. What we're saying is that we, we see the light and we're following. And, and, and we're just trying to show it to everybody else, that's all. Go ahead brother. Yeah, go ahead. No, I didn't know none of that. Absolutely. He said people praise God but follow the devil. Now, nobody willingly is following a, a, a man or, or, or a beast ran with, with a tail and some horns. No. We're following our flesh. We're following our lust, our lusty nature, our desires. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead, go ahead. Brother said that the police authority tell us not to do something we don't do it. Why? You know why? Because we fear physical repercussions to doing something that's transgressing the law. But well, we should be fearing transgressing the Almighty's law. Because let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, brother, before you go. Let me, let me, let me say something. People fear physical ramifications, like the brother said. We do, we do something, or what we're told not to do something by the law, and we don't do it. We're quick to make sure we're not doing it. 
but let God tell us not to do something. We don't fear it. Why? Because we don't see it. We just carnally minded. Ah. And a lot of us, you know what, we're in this society where, let me tell you something, we are demoralized, we are being demoralized as the days go, go on. Desensitized. To the point where, listen man, we're walking around like zombies. Why do you think they're always talking, promoting zombies? That's us. That's us. We are zombies. We literally are at, at, the, at the height of carnality in this society, man. And when you're at the height of carnality, you can't see what's spiritually prevalent in your face. You can't see what's spiritually happening. Allah? Absolutely not. I can't fear Allah. He's, he, he's nobody. Allah is nobody. I fear, I fear God. I hire. I am that I am. That's spoken about. You know what? According to today's uh, standards, people, people will call us Christians. But brother, I'm going to tell you what. But brother, I'm going to tell you what. We are Israelites. You understand? We're not those brothers, but you know what? We are, we believe we are, we know and believe we are Israelites, okay? We keep the commandments, we follow Christ, okay? We baptize, we preach to all nations, all nations, we teach all nations, but we follow the God that's written up in his Bible. Let's get Exodus 3 real quick. Huh? We're going we're to give you his name, Exodus uh, 3. We're going to give you his name, because you said a lot, brother. No, no, I, I told you guys what. Muslim? Okay, brother. Well, honest mistake, but uh, yeah, that's the God of the Muslims. You understand? That God has no power over our God. All right, brother. But brother, you know, according to we're, we're going to get into it, but we were just speaking about you know where I'm going. You know where I'm going, brother. That's against the commandments, brother. And the only reason we're saying it is just to give you light. You might not know. I, well, brother, according to Exodus 20, it's a graven image. All right, but we're going to get into this, and we'll talk about this. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss that. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Exodus chapter 3, verse 13. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What should I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. The Israelites, thank you, brother. The Israelites asked the Father, what is, what, is, what is your name? Excuse me, Moses asked the Father, he said, what is your name? I'm about to go back to your people, the Israelites. I got to tell them what your name is. They want to call you something. And what he said? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. What? I am that I am. Allah. I am that I am. Job. I am that I am. Now, if you go into the Hebrew, right, you're going to see that that I am that I am is translated into a higher, a sharp, a higher, which means I am that I am. That's why you'll hear us say a higher. Because we speak, we, we, we uh, try to communicate in the Hebrew. It's, it's, it's a lot more of a pure language than English. But that's another, that's another story for another day. But that is the Heavenly Father's name. Thus saith the Lord. He said that. He gave that straight to Moses. It's not Allah. It's not Jehovah. It's not God. It's I am. Okay? That's in the Bible, brother. You know? So we're, we're going to go right back to Exodus 20, brother. Because I... Okay. Okay. So you've been through it, brother. You, you've seen you see, you see a lot of the madness that goes on. Okay. All right, brother. Well, brother, we want to say that you said you dealt with Israelites, you dealt with Muslims. We are Israelites, but you know what? The majority of Israelites that you probably dealt with didn't deal with Christ. They were the ones cursing out the white man, cursing out their own people, weren't pointing stars. But we are not them. We are not them. And one of the big, one of the biggest differences is that we keep Christ 
That's the main core of what we do. And as long as you do that, you're okay. Because it doesn't matter if you you are if you know you're an Israelite. You, if you're not baptized, if you don't have Christ in your heart, if you're not living like Christ every day, battling in the flesh, trying to overcome the evil one, brother, it doesn't matter if you're an Israelite to the core. You know what? You're still gonna perish. You understand, brother? But that, but, but that image, brother, we're gonna deal with that right now. Exodus chapter 20, okay? Exodus chapter 20, verse 5. And thou shalt not bow down thyself, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God. Exodus chapter 20, verse 4. One of the commandments. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You understand, brother? It's a graven image. You see that? And the, and the vast majority of Christians are dealing with it. Okay. So, brother, you, you, you gotta have to put it. If you know it, you gotta. You gotta. You know. If you know better, you gotta do better, brother. You know that. You know. But well, we just out here to encourage. You knew that, but this is just a reminder. It's like if I'm doing something wrong and a brother brings me some knowledge out the Bible to correct what I'm doing that's an error, I got to conform. If I, say I, if I say I'm following Christ and doing it right, I got to conform. Otherwise, I'm a hypocrite. And I shouldn't be up here. You understand, brother? So we're going to get back to what we're reading, brother. And you came over. I did notice you. Praise the Father, brother. We uh we got flyers here. Take a, take a flyer. We got our contact information there. Well, uh, we got a church over in Harlem, uh, 123rd Street. Yeah, between uh, 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 you know, I know It's another Israelite church. I don't want you to end up going over there by accident. They're on 125th, we're on 123rd. Thank you to the church. We're two blocks away. It's like a little park there. Yeah, we gotta go there. It must be a holy day. It must be a day 
Well, do you, you do not conduct business? You, you do not work? You do not, you do not do your pleasures, right? So, clubbing, fornicating, or even relations with your, your spouse. Going, going out and, and having fun, hitting the movies, all that must be put aside. We have six days to do what we want. He asked for one day, one day to rest. And we need that rest. We need it. Working in the society. Working in the system. This rap race. We need that one day. But no. We've been conditioned to believe that Sunday, the next day, is the day that God gave us to rest. Which is completely false, according to the Bible. Sunday, Sunday is not the day of rest. It's absolutely not the day of rest. That's why we say that the majority of Christianity is opposed to the Bible and vice versa. Let's read that verse 8 again. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. For the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou shalt, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, that is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. That's crystal clear. You look at any calendar, Sunday is the first day. And if we're, if we're counting by the way we counted during biblical times, it is sundown to sundown, sundown to sundown. So this sundown Friday to Saturday, tomorrow sundown is the Sabbath day. That's one complete day. That's a day we are to honor. But the, the majority of us are what? We getting ready to do what we want, man. We getting ready to hit the club. We, we're, ready, we're getting ready to party. We already got everything set up. We already did our hair. We already got our, our, our line up done, right? We already went shopping and we're still gonna shop in, until tomorrow. Everything's upside down. This is bizarro world, man. Everything is back. Everything is backward in this matrix, man. This matrix, this matrix that we're in right now is going to be the death of so many. Of so many. So many are going to lose their soul in this matrix. And it's such a powerful matrix. I mean, we're getting hit from every front. Religion. You got that demonic box that's in everybody's house, that TV, entertainment, music, work. You're working 80, 70, 80 hours a week. You're so worn out. If you want, you want to do something on your day off on, 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 on Saturday. That's how Satan set it up. And you get paid Friday, right? You don't draw the check out to what? Friday night, right? So sometimes we, we cash it around Friday night ready to spend as soon as you get that money. We are backwards in this society, man. We are tore up. And it, it is the blacks and Hispanics that are getting it the worst, man. Why? Because we're God's chosen people. We are the Israelites. This book, from Genesis to Revelation, speaks about one specific people that God loved and adored. He loved them so much, he called them his own. He loved them so much that he chastised them every time they did something wrong. Until he got to the point where he wasn't going to deal with them anymore. He discontinued them from the heritage. Right? Only to bring them back. Only to bring them back in these last days. If you are black, Hispanic, Native American, West Indian, Jamaican, from the, from, from the islands, you are an Israelite. If your forefathers came on cargo slave ships, 
to South America, North America, Central America, all over the world, you are an Israelite, and it's time you wake up. Because when you start keeping the Sabbath, when you start keeping these commandments the way you should be, that's when, that's when a change will come. That's when you're going to start seeing more and more prophecies, and we're seeing it now, more and more prophecies coming, coming to manifest. More and more destruction on this land. That's, that's the Father's mission. And it will be complete. Will you be a part of it? Man, you gotta look real hard at what you have to gain and lose in this society, man. It's a no-brainer to choose the Heavenly Father's side, man. It's a no-brainer. What do you have to gain here, man? What do you have to gain? You already know that all these entertainers, you already know that all these entertainers are down with a group called the Illuminati. You know half of them are Freemasons. If not, half of them are, are Santeria. I know, I know, I know artists, man. I know artists that are touring right now. That just came back from touring telling me, man, brother, you don't know how much Santeria, how much witchcraft is in the music industry. It is, the, it is amazing. have sold out. Right? Floyd Money Mayweather. A man just promoted money. A man glorified money. And he and he has millions and millions of followers. People idolizing this man. Jay-Z, the same thing. We already know, and they make it plain that they worship and, and they're down with with Satan in his system. They know it. They, they, they throw up their signs. They wear the symbols. It's blatant and it's in your face to condition you to accept it. Because let me tell you, sir, when society cracks, when inflation hits, just like it did in Zimbabwe, right? When you go into your bank account and the 50, 70, even $10,000 that you had is worth nothing, that's when you're going to see the beast start flying himself real open. That's when you're going to see Satan. Just, listen, him and his army, they're coming out with the mark of the beast. And they're going to tell you straight up, you're, you're going to be a part of this new system or you're going to die. That's where we're at. 2013. Every year that goes by, society becomes more numb, more mind numbing, and more not mind numbing. There is less truth and less truth being spoken. It's gonna get to the point where you're not even gonna hear us out here anymore. And then it's gonna hit. Then it's gonna hit like a bomb. Then it's gonna hit. Like the scriptures say, there's going to be a famine in the land. Not of one of bread and water, but of one of hearing the word of God. And it's already, we're already at that point. We're just that little light that's about to go out. And once that light goes out, and pure darkness engulfs the land, you're going to remember that light. You're going to remember that light. And it's not us, it's what we're speaking. It's this word right here. It's this, this is the light. Christ is the light. That's all we're speaking about. We gotta, we gotta get up, man. Get serious. We are about to go through some serious turmoil. Especially you blacks and Hispanics and Native Americans, you Israelites. We are about to go through some serious turmoil. But you know what? After this turmoil, after this turmoil is done, that's it. There is no more captivity for us. Those that decided to live righteous, that decided to do the right thing, they're going to partake of that tree, the everlasting tree. Let's get off. Let's get off Ezekiel 3.